All right, what is up, Internet? So, something really exciting today that I think is super cool is running MPLS over our DM VPN network. So, passing labels, we can do stuff full blown VRF, something we'll demonstrate in this video, over our DM VPN network, which is freaking awesome. So there is one caveat that I'll dive into a little bit into the video, and that's um, this only works per Cisco documentation in a hub and spoke um, uh, switching path. That is, you can't have dynamic tunnels built between spokes and have um, and have labels switched over those dynamic tunnels. Doesn't work. Believe me, I tried. Even did some targeted LDP neighborships and got nothing. But if you route everything through the hub. It works perfectly fine, and you can have full-blown VRF. So, without further ado, we'll talk a little bit about the topology. So, I have serial links connecting all of my spokes to this hub router. They're all slash 30 links in the 192.168 space. So, the third octet there is the lower router number followed by the higher router number. So, for example, this link here between R1 and R2 would be 192.168. 1.12, and then either one or two. Um, the hub is always going to be one on those serial links, and the spokes are always going to be two. And then the loopback address is 192.168, and then the router number for the second and third, uh, or sorry, for the third and fourth octets. And that's actually what we're building our DMVPN between. So we'll take a look really quick. I actually already have DMVPN set up on the hub. We'll do show IP in brief, and we'll exclude unassigned. So there's our serial links right there going to our routers 2, 3, and 4, our loop back. We have our tunnel interface. Do a show run on tunnel 100. I'm using EIGRP over my DMVPN cloud. You can see I have split horizon turned off, but I do not have next hop self turned off because, and again, we need to have uh, the routing path or the label switching path needs to go um, spoke, hub, spoke in our spoke-to-spoke -spoke communications for MPLS to work over DMVPN. So, all traffic routes to the hub. But yeah, I got EIGRP set up. You can see loopback zero is the source. We can do show DMVPN. You'll see that we have our sessions up. We can ping our spoke routers in the 1010-100 network, two, three, and four. So we're ready to rock there. All that's good. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into global config We'll do MPLS IP, MPLS LDP, router ID. We're going to set it as loopback 100. This 1010 100. Dot, or, sorry, 1010, and then the router number 11 for router 1, 22 for router 2. You get the idea. Well, well we don't have to set it as force because the, the masks actually match, but we'll do it anyway. And then we'll go on into our tunnel 100 interfaces. We'll do MPLS IP. And that should get us started. See that there, there, there. You can see we're getting our LDP neighborships up. Awesome. You show MPLS forwarding table. We got pop label operations to hit the loopbacks for routers two, three, and four, which is awesome. And on the spokes, we'll do show MPLS forwarding table. And we have a pop operation for the hub, and then we actually have outgoing labels for our spoke routers, which is awesome. That's exactly what we want to see. I'm going to break it after we get it working just to show you what happens if you don't have all your traffic going through the hub. You can see the next top here is all through the hub. So let's test this out. Go into global config again. We'll do router BGP. I'm going to do this on the hub, make the hub a route reflector, and then let the spokes um, host a couple loopbacks that are inside VRF. So we'll do router BGP 65,000, and we'll do neighbor 10.10.22, remote AS 65,000. We're going to send community both, not because you have to, but just because I like to. I say update source is loopback 100. We'll do address family VPN v4. Ah, getting ahead of myself. Hold on. Okay. Let's get three and four in there also.
and four. Replace, replace, replace. Now we'll do neighbor. I can spell ten, ten, two, two, and we'll activate neighbor ten, ten, two, two. Route reflect. Sweet. All right, so we got that set up for the hub. Throw that in there. And then way simpler on the spokes. Put that on two, three, four. Here we go, we got twos up. Three's up. Come on, four. Any day now. There we go. Router four. Awesome. Cool. So we have our BPM v4 address families are up. So let's do IPVRF. We'll call it MPLS. Why not? That's a totally original name. Given an RD of 65,000 colon one. Route target, and this isn't going to be a super complex VRF setup because it's not really the whole purpose of the video. It's just that we can get label switching working over our DMVPN cloud. So I'm not going to do anything fancy with uh, route targets or anything like that. I'm just going to import and export 65,000, 65,000. We'll say interface loop back 1001. So it's something pretty arbitrary. And let's make up a network. One night. Let's first put that in the VRF. Now we'll make up a network. 192.168.25. Ah, uh, you know what? Things I should have planned out. So we'll do 16.2.1 for router 2. Three dot one for router three. Four dot one for router four. Shazam. Go back in router BGP sixty five thousand. We'll hit the address family. IPv four VRF MPLS. And again, super simple. We'll just redistribute connected routes. So if you looked at the MPLS forwarding table earlier and you saw that we had outgoing labels, you should already know that this is going to work. But just to see it in action, right? Throw that there, there, there. All right. So we got BGP routes inside of our MPLS VRF. And I should be able to ping VRF MPLS 172. 16.3.1. Oh my god, it works. So, again, we have our label switching paths for working. They're going directly through the hub. Everything is fine and dandy there. How awesome is that? That we can get MPLS running over our DMVPN cloud. Super cool. So, let's break it. <laughs> let's look and see what happens if our next hop isn't the hub router. You can see the frustrations of that. All right, so we're going to Tunnel 100. And we'll do this like it's just a standard EIGRP DMVPN deployment. We'll say no IP next hop. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Hyphen again. For EIGRP 100, we'll do a quick resync. Look at that. Show IP route EIGRP. We have our EIGRP routes in. But if we look at our MPLS forwarding table, you'll see that we have no labels to get to our hubs. What does it mean in MPLS when you have no labels? It means that you don't have MPLS. So you can try and get around this. Uh, I encourage anybody, you know, the two people that watch this video to go ahead and try. Uh, I did all kinds of stuff, man. I did MPLS LDP 
neighbor 10 10 3.3 the target LDP sessions and I'll show you what happens there you'll get a moment of hope right because you'll do that and you're like well maybe oh my gosh we have LDP neighbors yay but it does absolutely nothing for you you still have no label to get back to R2 and R2 still has no label to get to R3. It will never work. So when I read up on Cisco's documentation, um, in standard Cisco fashion, they don't come out right and tell you why you can't have um, label switching over dynamic tunnels. All they do is tell you that it's hub and spoke only at this time, and they talk up all the great benefits of having hub and spoke MPLS routing and how it can really improve VoIP op optimization because there can be packets out of order for the initial tunnel setup and blah, 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 blah. Bottom line is it doesn't freaking work. Um, <laughs> and it's, that part's kind of frustrating because it means if you want to run full-blown VRF over your DMVPN cloud, it means that you have to break one of the coolest things about DMVPN, and that is dynamic tunnels, because they are useless in, um, in a full-blown VRF deployment, because they don't do anything. So we'll turn next top self back on. We'll wait for EIGRP to resync. Look at our MPLS forwarding table, and yay, labels are back. And since labels are back, it means we have MPLS again. We can actually source from LO 1001. Look at that. Beautiful. So while that's a minor annoyance that you can't have dynamic tunnels when you're running MPLS over your DMVPN topology, um, it's still super cool that you can do this and you can have full-blown VRF now with DMVPN. It really means that you can do that anybody can have full-blown VRF now for whatever their needs. And I think that's awesome. Um, Something I didn't cover about the topology earlier, to support this DMVPN backbone, not only do I have these serial links, they're all running in OSPF. It doesn't really have a bearing on the fact that you can do this MPLS over DMVPN. Just wanted to, you know, full disclosure, show run, section, router, OSPF, just in case you were wondering how the spokes are reaching one another. Oop, that's the AGRP again. They have OSPF for a backbone, just because it's something that I see Cisco 360 doing a lot, and to help prep for the lab, it's just another layer of complexity for your DMVPN is to have a routing protocol underneath it to support DMVPN. So just putting that out there. But yeah, MPLS over DMVPN works, and it's totally awesome, minus the lacking of spoke-to-spoke -spoke tunnels.